emotional scenes today in Washington when General Eisenhower made his inaugural address as the newly elected President of the United States. The General, known and respected on this side of the Atlantic as the very able Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces in Europe. It's a bit neglected, I admit, but nobody's lived in it for two years or more. That's the fault of the owner. Bought it ten years ago and then got posted abroad. Since then, he's insisted on trying to rent the place out. All that time, I've been telling him, people who can afford to rent a house like this can afford to buy. Finally persuaded him to put it on the open market. I'm very glad you did. You like the house, then? Very much. Is it too soon to talk about contracts? One last hurdle to overcome. Penny! Penny? What do you think? Well, you want to, don't you? Well, you know, I've always wanted to live in an area like this. Oh, darling. Be a perfect end to a perfect honeymoon. And I did promise to obey. We can go ahead, fix the deal. Mm. It's going to be great. Spacious. A bit run down, needs redecorating, of course, but the fabric of the building is sound. And it's got atmosphere. You have to admit, it's got atmosphere. Yes. I must say, you've done wonders in such a short space of time, Mrs. Burns. Oh, wonders. We decided to keep this colour scheme. It's cleaned up very well. And, well, it's sort of in character with the house. Yes, it's funny how bricks and mortar can be altered by, well, people. The house is quite different again. But you said you had a problem. Oh, yes, the central heating. It's not working very well. It's something to do with the layout and the pipes. Mr. Felsen, could you come up here a moment, please? Mr. Felsen, this is Mr. Felsen. Hello, Felsen. Felsen. So you know each other? We all know Filson around here. What's the trouble? The pipes. What about them? I can't find them. Why? Because somebody cemented them over, that's why. Main pipes from the boiler cemented over. I'm having to rely on memory. Well, you installed the system, didn't you? Oh, aye, but that was more than, uh, no more than that. More than 20 years ago now, while well, Miss Millington was here. Poor Miss Millington. Having to dig up the floor again to find them. Dig it up. That's a bit drastic, isn't it? Look, Surely there's no need to. I presume you know your job, Mr. Killett. You presume I know mine. Hmm. I get the impression that you and Filson don't get along. He's a troublemaker, a gossip. 
But I must be on my way. Congratulations again. You've done marvelously. Mr. Filson? Who was Miss Millington? Woman who once lived here. But you said poor Miss Millington. Why? Because she disappeared, that's why. One day she was here, the next gone. Killett reckoned she ran away with a man. But me, I say she disappeared. But where to? That's anybody's guess. Ray, darling? Ah! Oh! 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 Uh, darling, how's my little girl been? I didn't hear you come in. I came in the back door. Got a new lawnmower. Dropped it off in the shed. It was you then. What? Whistling. It was you whistling. Whistling? No. What? But it must have been. It, it was you. <laughs> I haven't whistled all day. Do you think I'm a kettle or something? But I, I heard you just a minute ago. In here. Darling, I wasn't. But you were whistling a tune. It was... Uh, Green sleeves. It's for your imagination. <laughs> Trick of the wind or something. Eh? Come on, what's for supper? Screamed. It was terrifying. Somebody screamed? Yes. Now, who? Where? Huh? Downstairs. Outside, perhaps. It sounded like a woman. Oh, Ray, there's something terribly wrong. A scream? Yes. like a therma cartoon.
Well? You did hear a scream. It was an owl. Oh. I was just about to make a meal out of this. Found him cowering under the wood pile. Is it all right? Yeah, he's just frightened. Hey. Two frightened rabbits. Can't be positive about the identity, of course. Not yet, but um, everything fits. Elizabeth Millington. She occupied this house from 1947 to 1953 and then disappeared. There was an inquiry at the time. But nobody thought to dig up the cellar floor. Well, not even the police go smashing up other people's houses. <laughs> not unless there's a very strong reason. Murder wasn't suspected then? No. No, of course, all this was before my time, but apparently this Millington woman was a bit of an eccentric liable to get up and go at a moment's notice. And she was supposed to be wealthy enough to be able to do so. Probably why she was murdered. Living alone, with a local reputation for having money in the house. Oh, I'm afraid my men are going to make quite a mess of your cellar. Well, the whole floor's got to come up. Well, you were planning on that anyway, so you're just saving us a job. Yes, that's lucky. Yeah, it, well, for us, I mean. Otherwise, the cellar might have gone undisturbed for years yet. No. No, she wanted to be found. She screamed out for it. What? My wife is highly imaginative, Inspector, and this business is hardly good on the nerves. No, well, we will try and get it over with as soon as possible. Thanks for cooperating. Be an empty kind of investigation, though. We're not likely to catch up in the killer now. <laughs> not after all these years. Yes, you will. What do you mean, Mrs. Burns? I don't know. Huh? <laughs> 
Who is it? Who is it? Wait a minute. They're not another scream, are they? He's here. He's come back. What are you talking about? The killer. He's in the house. I can feel it. Oh, come on, look, Penny, darling. I love you very dearly, but this has gone far enough. He's downstairs. In the scullery. All right. Clear this up once and for all. Come on. Penny. Hey. You're going down to the scullery, and every other room in this house, until you are absolutely certain that there is nobody there. And then perhaps we can both get some sleep. Now, come on. Come on. I'm not in there, Mr. Murderer, are you? Right. No one there. Hmm? Now the dreaded scullery. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Now look. found the money. He's still looking for it. What baffles me, Mr. Burns, is why now? This house has been on my books for years. I've let it a dozen times. Why, I even sold it to Miss Millington in the first place. And there's never been any hint of a ghost or any kind of psychic phenomenon in all that time. Talk as though you believe that rubbish. Oh, I don't. And yet I do. Dealing in property, especially in an area like this, full of old houses with lots of history, I've come across things I haven't been able to explain. But never here, never a whisper of it here. You put that down to my wife. <laughs> She's psychic, is that what you mean? She's got a runaway imagination, that's what I mean. But if you don't believe in it, why all this tonight? I'm humoring her. And also, you can put it down to vanity. I like this house, Kellett. I always wanted it. Or something like it. I remember when I was... Just a salesman. Stop my car very often, look down on an area like this, full of grand houses, surrounded by space. And I swore to myself that one day, I would own a place like it. And now that I do, no darn myth or ghost or whatever is gonna drive me out of it. Well, that's why I'm going along with this idea of pennies, but believe in it. <laughs> Ray, this is Mrs. Rafting. This is my husband, Ray. And Mr. Kellett. How do you do? Mrs. Rafting? Please, call me Cecily. It's simpler, to the point. Well, here we'll do, if you would like to all take a seat. Uh, well, just like that, straight away. Wouldn't you like to talk about it a little? Talk isn't going to remove your scepticism, is it, Mr. Burns? I feel it. And your instincts are right. There are other things here, too. Yes. Would you like a drink? Oh, no, thanks. Or does this spirit interfere with your car? There are no rules, Mr. Burns. Save one. Should I achieve a state of trance, please make no attempt to awaken me. It can be painful and dangerous. Mr. Kellett, I believe you have known this house for many years. Twenty-five or more. Would you sit on my left, please? It may help, Mrs. Burns. With the sceptic directly opposite me, to make sure there is no cheating. But first, the lights, if you please. You can leave that one. Now, will you just lightly touch hands? And now, if you will concentrate your thoughts upon this house. This house. This house. Is there someone here? In this house? 
Is there someone? Will you come to me? 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 Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Are you? Elizabeth. Elizabeth Millington. Is that who you are? Millington. It's so cold. It's so cold in the cellar. So cold. The wireless is on. General Eisenhower. They are talking about him. He has just become president. That was in 1953. She's reliving that day. Is that the year, 1953? Yes. I told you not to come here again. Yesterday, I distinctly told you not to call here again. Please. Please. No. I'm going to be rich. Have all the things I ever wanted. Can you tell us your name? Hasn't this gone far enough? Your name? I... I've forgotten. Surely you can remember your name. Don't want to remember. Blot it out. All the memories, blot them out. Push them away. Start a new life. No name, no memories. Mrs. Rafty. I feel your presence here in this room. But you don't belong here. Not in this house. Not anymore. I want to take you away with me. Do you understand? I want you to come away with me. Will you do that? Come away with me and leave these people in peace? Failed. Not a bit of it. Yeah, wonderful performance. I tried every minute of it. I felt it. 
his presence. He was here in this room. As tangible to me as this table, he, his soul, his alter ego, whatever you like to call it, was here. I was controlling him too, taking him away with me and then... Then, then he ran away like a bad boy, hmm? He hasn't run away, Mr. Burns. He's still here. His influence, it's still here. He's not with me anymore, but he's still here. The question is where? Well, I think we all need a drink. Quite an evening, eh? Miss Cecily Rafting certainly knows her stuff. Does that mean you believe in her now? I wouldn't go as far as that. Mumbo Jumbo. It's very convincing, Mumbo Jumbo. I have to admire her style. Sorry. <laughs> Such a catchy little tune. Come on, join in the chorus, make a joke of it. I don't feel like joking. Sake. Who'd do a thing like this? You know. You know who did it. It's ridiculous. Is it? Look, you checked every window and every door, and every single one of them was locked. It was him, Ray. It must have been him. I won't have it, and neither will you. Well, then give me some other explanation. Somebody used a key. Filson, he had a key. He returned it. So he had a duplicate cut first. It could easily have been Filson used a key, crept in here last night. And took absolutely nothing. Oh, I know. Maybe he's working off a grudge of some kind, just vandalism. It doesn't work, Ray. It just doesn't work. We've got to leave this house, sell it. No. Get away from here before something worse happens. We are not leaving. You may not be, but I am, and I'm going to do something about it now. No. Penny! The 
There's more to a house than bricks and mortar. There's an atmosphere, an ambience. And if that's wrong, the people in it are wrong. How about we phone Kellett? Get him over here at once. See if we can't cut our losses and find somewhere else in the area a bit more suitable. Fortunately, we haven't spent much on making it good. Ah! No! I want to kill you. Just for a moment. Penny. What are you? Oh, I'm just blacked out. I didn't... It wasn't me. It's this house. There is something that's... There's an influence. That's why we've got to sell this house. Get away from here. No, before... no, no. I, yes, I agree with you. There is something about this place, but... Oh, for pity's sake, we're adults and intelligent, I hope. Whatever it is, we must face it, meet it, and drive it out. A penny, please, please. I don't want to run. Don't make me do that. Whatever it is, it can't be stronger than us, can it? Hmm? I mean, than what we mean to each other. So that's what we've decided. We're going to stay here and see it through. Oh, Ray's quite right. I've been getting too hysterical about the whole thing. What was needed was a cold, clear, clinical look at things. There's just one thing that I have to be sure about. His body isn't hidden somewhere in the house. I mean, you'd know if it was. I don't follow you. Body? The man. The man who killed Elizabeth Millington. Wherever he's buried, well, is not in the... What makes you think he's dead? But you contacted his soul. <laughs> the soul exists in the dead and the living, Mrs. Burns. I made contact, yes, but what with, I'm not sure. Him, his mind, his spirit, or perhaps just his evil influence. Or perhaps only the memory of that terrible incident that still lingers in this house. Well, you must have had a favourite place as a child, a, a hideaway, a, a picnic spot, perhaps. And when you return there, those long past incidents still remain. So vivid you can almost hear the childish laughter. Or like a painter who captures a mood or a scene and then moves on, yet wherever that picture is hung, whoever sees it, the influence remains sharp and fresh. Well, just oils and canvas can evoke that, Mrs. Burns. And we are dealing with more than oils and canvas. <laughs> but I've disturbed you unnecessarily. Unnecessary. Since you talked so much, I had no chance to tell you. The moment I walked through that door, I knew he'd gone. What? I can promise you, Mrs. Burns, that he is no longer in this house. Hello, Mrs. Routing. Penny Dunn. Here. Looking very pale. Has only seen a ghost or something? Sorry, it was a joke. Very bad taste, I'm afraid. I hope you've been saying comforting things to my wife. Well, she has. We're free, Ray. I was always that. No, of him. He's gone, vanished. Isn't that right? Oh, yes. Yes, well, I must be going. Mr. Burns? Mr. Rowley? Bye. <coughs> Bye. And you have been on a shopping <laughs> spree. They had a sale at the kitchen shop. I couldn't resist it. Yeah. You are intent on making me a slave to the kitchen. <laughs> oh, darling. I do love you. What's this? Now, these. A girl in the shop assured me that no. Self-respecting kitchen should be without them.
Hello, come in. Uh, would you like a coffee? No, thanks. Or is it social or business? I'm not sure. Do you mind if I go down into the cellar? Help yourself. I wouldn't have dared go this far. This morning I came right down to the bottom without a qualm. I suppose it's logic taking precedence over superstition. Not superstition. He's not still here, is he? No. No, not at the moment. It's your birthday soon. I say you are good. It's, uh, it's tomorrow, as a matter of fact, but how did you know? <laughs> Felt it. Or as a cold-blooded scientist might say, I perceived your excitement. All right. What's Ray giving me? I'm not sure. Then I'm one up on you. It's a ring. A big antique ring. Oh, no. I don't think so. Yes, it is. What makes you think it's a ring? I don't think. I know. I feel it. A big antique ring. Hmm. Have you seen the paper? Oh, I glanced at it. I skipped impending World War Three and the latest government crisis and turned straight to the women's page. Did you skip this? The murder which took place about 20 miles from here? Oh, how awful. Poor woman. You were asleep at the time. What? Well, they say it must have happened soon after midnight. You would have been asleep at the time. Oh, yes. And your husband? He was asleep too? <laughs> of course. He doesn't work nights, you know. What's bothering you? <sighs> I wish I knew. I work entirely upon instinct, you know, feelings. And this morning I woke up. I took the paper and it opened at this page. She was killed with a knife. There were certain items missing, silver, jewellery. Rings. Are you sure you wouldn't like some coffee? I don't know what's bothering me, Mrs. Burns. Unless it's guilt. Guilt about what? At having brought something back released some power. This murder, it, it's awfully like the other one. Oh, look, it's usually you having to reassure me. Well, there can't be any connection, now can there? No. No, of course not. I should know better than to bring my depressions to you. It isn't fair. Well, Any time, but I honestly don't know what you're on about. That about sums me up. Thanks, anyway. It's not a ring. It's something sharp, pointed. It will draw blood. Blood. Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Did I? Maybe we should have any more. <laughs> you sure you don't mind not having a party? Well, it's our first together. I'd rather it was like this, just the two of us. Oh, darling, it's absolutely... Oh, it's marvellous. You don't like it? You can change it if you want. No, 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 it's beautiful. Now then, where shall I wear it? Here. 
Yeah, but let me do it. That's dangerous. Thought I'd join you. Well, you were making a milk drink, weren't you? Hmm? Hey? Ray? Mm -hmm. What have you done with the knife? Right. One of the sets you bought. There's one missing. Mm -hmm. So perhaps you'd put it somewhere. No, it's probably in the drawer somewhere. I like the brooch. Good. I had a distinct impression that you did, but I told you you can change it if you want to. No, no, I like it. Good. It's funny. I was betting that you would buy me a ring. Ring? So what you want? A ring? I, I told you you can exchange it if you want. <laughs> I don't want a ring. It's just that that's what I thought you'd buy me. A big antique ring with a red stone in it. Hmm. Next year, I'll get you that next year. Wish I knew where that knife had got to. Well, one thing's for certain, darling. <laughs> it's not our pet ghost, eh? He's dead and gone. Oh, operator, I want to call a Mrs. Cecily Rafting. I think her number is... No. No, I'm sorry, don't bother. Thank you. Did I? Oh, well, I thought I'd better come down and finish the job. 
Seeing as how I was contracted for it, after all, police should have done by now, so I'd better render and make good. <laughs> yeah, looks like they've done most of the job for me, and none of them paid up union members. <laughs> you still want me to finish the job, do you? Yes. Sounds like the phone's ringing. Hello. What was it? Oh, Mrs. Rafting. Yes, what's wrong? Uh, I don't know what you mean. No. No, you must be mistaken. I see. You don't want to meet, then? Oh, I'd love to meet you socially, uh, to talk. Tonight's no good, is it? Oh, no, I, I'm meeting my sister in town. Tomorrow? She's only here for two... Yes. Yes, tomorrow will be fine. I look forward to that. Mrs. Burns, your husband isn't going with you tonight, is he? No. No, I thought not. But see you tomorrow, then. Yes. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Supper's right here. And if you fancy something hot for dessert, just stick this in the oven for 15 minutes. And don't forget it. Only 15 minutes. I don't want to find the house burnt down. Oh, darling, are you sure you're going to be all right? Not at all sure, no. I'm well, supposing my train set comes off the rails. <laughs> now, look, you go and enjoy yourself. Give my love to Sal and tell her that she's got to come down and see us soon. You will be all right. I'm the one who should be worried, the way you drive. <laughs> it's our oh. first night apart. I know. Now, I'd rather that than you driving home in the early hours of the morning. Mm. Eh? I'll be back before ten tomorrow. Good night, darling. Good night, darling. You take care. And you. Bye. It's not possible. I'm very much afraid it is, Mr. Burns. And it's my stupid meddling fault. That's why I'm here. I'd like the chance to undo what I brought about. It's not me. It can't be me. No, 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 not you, Mr. Burns. Think of it as him, X, the unknown. You are, have been, possessed, Mr. Burns. <laughs> and scepticism spreads across your face like a blush. And yet in medieval times, as late as the 18th century, that term, possession, would not have raised an eyebrow. I have much to rectify, Mr. Burns. 
I never make the same mistake twice. And my initial mistake was not to begin at the beginning. Down there. If you please, Mr. Burns. Now, you understand what I must do. I'm not sure. It's important that you are sure. Something lives within you, Mr. Burns, and drives you. I must take that burden from you, place it upon my own shoulders, and with it, leave this house forever. You understand now? Touch me. You are here. I know you are here. I feel you. Who are you? Raymond Burns. No, you, you, your name. My will is stronger than yours. Tell me your name. No. Don't remember. Don't, don't remember. Why will you not leave this house? Did, did leave. I came back. Why? Because I summoned you? No, no, no. This is the money. It's the money. I, the money. I search for it and I search for it. I search. I can't find it. There is none to find, so forget and leave uh, now. Uh, leave uh, with me. How uh, oh, can all be for loving? I need money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just get it somewhere else. It's all right. <laughs> Make sure it's time. Somewhere else? <laughs> Another murder? Where? Chelsea, this key's closer. She lives all over the little house. She's rich. She's got money. She's rich. She's rich. She's... <laughs> Stronger than I would have imagined possible. His presence here is so real. We've learned one thing more, though. Very important. Something very easy to check up on. King's close, Chelsea. I told you that. Yes, you said there was a woman who lived there who. Stupid mistake. Oh, no. Oh, she's in fine form. She's got a new fiance. This time I think it's the real thing. He's a barrister and very handsome, judging by his face. Right, so tell me all about it tonight, Billy. I've got a big meeting. Let's go. Oh, by the way, don't go down the cellar. Why? I occupied my empty hours by being useful around the house.
Who's that? Is there somebody there? You're not sickening for something, are you? No. You're in a funny mood, though. Why? I hardly said a word all evening. Are you sure you're all right? Yes. No, darling. You sleep tight. Ray. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. I went into town again today. All right. I went to Chelsea. Buy yourself something nice. I didn't go to shop. I went to look around. You should have bought yourself something. Cheered yourself up a bit. No. Eh? Cecily Rafting has disappeared. She hasn't been seen for 24 hours. I think she's dead. And I think she's in the cellar. Who now? Yes. It's not me. You mustn't think it's me. Yes, Ray. No, no, not, not me! Raymond Burns! It's, it's him! Possessing me! Please, Penny, darling, you must help me. I went to Chelsea today. Where? To King's Close, Chelsea. I never realised before. King's Close backs on to where you used to have your apartment. Twelve years ago, there was a murder there. A rich, lonely old woman was stabbed to death. The killer got away with jewellery and money. Lots of money, Ray. Twelve years ago. About the time when you started to do really well. About the time you were able to finance your own business. What is what are you saying? You killed that woman, Ray. No! It's, it's not true. It's not true. I won't have it. You mean your mind won't have it? You try to blot it out. It's too painful to look at, so you try to blot it out, like Elizabeth Millington. You aren't possessed. The only evil presence in this house is you. Look, <laughs> darling, it was always you. Now listen to me. Twenty years ago, you killed Elizabeth Millington. And something in your subconscious, something perhaps that even you don't understand, drew you back here to look for that money which you never found. You didn't become the murderer. You always were. Thank <laughs> you. 
I like it. I really like it. What do you think, darling? If you like it that much, we'll take it. It's a bit spooky, though, isn't it? Not a bit of it. Not anymore. <laughs>